Hello, my name is Annette, and welcome to another module in the NSAI Expert Training Series. In this module, we will cover the National E-Balloting Platform, or NEP, and how you, as an expert, can use it to provide feedback on standards. Next slide. In this module, we will be covering several learning outcomes, starting with the balloting workflow, email notifications, and the information included in such notifications, logging in, using the e-balloting platform, the comment template, how to complete it, good practices for its use, and lastly, what happens to your comment when submitted. Next slide. As an NSAI expert following work in ISO and SEN committees, you can now submit your recommended vote and comments electronically via the National eBalloting Platform, or NEP. Here is a representation of the eBalloting Platform workflow and what happens. When a ballot is posted at the international level, a ballot is automatically opened at the national level. But it will be available with a slightly shorter time frame at the national level, opening a few days after the international ballot and closing about one week before the closing date of the international ballot. The reason for this will be explained later. As a signed up national member, you will automatically receive a notification email from ISO event notification or SEN event notification depending on the international committees being monitored. This email will include summary information about the ballot or, as is generally the case, several ballots opened under a technical committee denoted by the letters TC and a link that will bring you to the relevant ballot on the NEP. Once you click on the link, you will be asked to log in using your username and password which you were assigned when joining. When logged in, you will have access to the ballot document and can also vote and submit comments. We will go through this in more detail in the next few slides. You will receive reminders of open ballots four weeks after the initial notification and again one week before the ballot closure date. Therefore, you get several reminders on ballots, giving experts opportunities to provide input. Next slide. Here is an example of a notification email, listing a number of votes that have been posted for NSAI TC 005 forward slash SC6. On the left hand side, the originating TC is listed. In this case, it's ISO TC 150. In the middle, you can see links that will bring you to the individual vote on the NEP. Finally, on the right-hand side, you have actions and deadlines. In this case, all our votes and the date is the deadline for voting. The notification also includes the document type and subtype, which in this case are ballots with committee internal ballots or CIBs and one resolution. Therefore, ballot notification emails do provide quite a bit of information that can help you decide which documents you want to provide input on. Next slide. We have mentioned that when you click on any of the links in a notification email, you will be asked to log in with your assigned username and password. This slide shows the login window that opens when you click on such a link. If you have problems logging in, you should contact your standard officer. Next slide. This slide shows the ballot information once you log in and we will briefly go through this so you get to know what to look for. The first box is called reference. It shows the standard number for the ballot. In this example it is ISO forward slash IEC FDIS 19845. This box shows the National Committee reference. Here it is NSAI TC2. The opening date and, more importantly, the closing date are shown, as is the title of the standard. The second box gives the metadata 
from the source ballot at ISO and CEN. Here you can see the source committee. In this case, it is ISO forward slash IEC JTC1 and the opening and closing dates for the international ballot. You will see that this opens a couple of days before the national ballot listed in the first box and the closing date is about one week after the closing date at the national level. The earlier closing date at the national level gives the NSAI secretary a chance to review all national inputs and consult as necessary with committee members to reach a consensus on national input. The draft standards can be obtained from the third box, reference documents and links. In some cases, mainly in SEN, you can get different language versions listed here. This can include the French version, noted using a capital F at the end of the file name, or the German version, indicated by a capital D. The English version is indicated by a capital E at the end of the file name. Finally, you have the ballot questions and the response options listed in the last box. These can be selected once you click on the Cast Vote button at the top right-hand side. We will go through this in the next couple of slides. Next slide. We will now go through the steps you take to submit a ballot on the system. The first step is to click on the Cast Vote button appearing at the top right-hand side. Next slide. Clicking on the Cast Vote button opens the voting options. These are the same questions that appear at the international level and which NSAI votes on using your input to inform that response. To select your option, you need to click on the arrow at the end of the test box next to the ballot question. You can select the Cast Vote button at the bottom of the page. If you have comments, there is a specific template that is used and we will cover how to access this and complete it. Next slide. This slide shows another example of a ballot and the list of questions that can be asked. The key question is question 1A relating to ballot approval. Question 1B asks about consulting with relevant stakeholders. This relates to NSAI engaging with experts, which we generally do through our national committees. However, you need to select and answer to all questions to cast your vote. If you have comments, you need to use the specific comment template. This needs to be uploaded as part of the ballot, so you do need to have your comment ready before you cast your vote. This requires a review of the proposed draft, collation of any comments you may have, and saving them before loading into the NEP using the Cast Vote button. Next slide. You can access the commenting template through the voting platform by selecting the options Approval with Comments or Disapproval. It should be noted that if you are disapproving a vote, you need to submit comments and highlight key technical issues that need to be fixed. This slide shows the link to the commenting template that is there when you select the above options. When you click on this, it opens a blank template that needs to be downloaded and saved for you to add your comments. Once you have added your comments and saved, you can go back to the ballot and add the file as part of the ballot. To submit your comments, you need to hit the Cast Vote button. These inputs are only submitted to NSAI and do not go to SEN or ISO. NSAI reviews them all to inform our response on international ballots. It should be noted that NSAI has a default vote, which is, generally, to abstain if no input is received. Next slide. Here we show the layout of the comment template. The header should be complete, ensuring you are listing the correct draft and standard number. The first column is the member body, or MB, and for international inputs, this needs to include the country code for Ireland, which is IE. At the national level, you could submit your initials in this column, so your NSAI secretary can track and trace all national inputs. 
Check with your secretary if they have any preference for national inputs. The next three columns are very important, covering line number, clause or subclause, and paragraph or figure, forward slash table. These three columns are used to track and trace where exactly in the document you are making comments. At the international level, there can be thousands of comments, so please be specific regarding number of the clause, paragraph number or line numbers if included in the draft. This will ensure international groups can find exactly where in the document you have a comment. The next column is the type of comment, and there are three different types, general, technical and editorial. These are relatively self-evident, but there is a footnote in the template providing more information to help you. The next two columns are very important and both need to be completed to have your comment and proposed change considered. The comment column should highlight the issue or concern you have and include problem text. The proposed change column should have alternative text that you would like to see added to address the issue or concern you are raising. The final column is left blank and is completed by the TC Secretary when all comments are reviewed by the drafting group following the ballot closure. In general, if you have issues with a draft standard, it is better to vote against it and provide a rationale for your position in the comments template. Next slide. All ballot inputs at both national and international level are reviewed as previously stated national responses are considered as national inputs to international ballots. At the national level, the Secretary reviews all inputs received via the NEP. Where there are conflicting contributions, further consultation is required to resolve or agree the national position on the ballot. The aim is to reach consensus on the national comments and the input on the international ballot. In cases where consensus cannot be reached, NSAI may take the decision to abstain on the ballot. NSAI has a default voting position if no inputs are received, which is set out in NSAI procedures. Please check with your committee secretary for more information. At the international level, the secretary will collate all comments received as part of a ballot and distribute them as a committee document. The group tasked with developing the standard will review all comments received and agree what changes will be included in subsequent drafts. To ensure national comments are considered, it is best to have representatives attending drafting meetings to further support the national position. All changes require consensus before moving to the next stage in the development process. It should be noted that in final draft votes, FDIS at ISO or FPOEN at SEN, no technical changes are accepted, only editorial. Technical comments submitted at the final draft stage are kept for the next revision. Next slide. Thank you for your attention. For other training modules on standardization, please see our Learning Centre on the NSAI website www.nsai.ie